Okay, excellent. And let's start. Okay, so the topic is operational, differential, and instrumentation amplifiers. So the keyboard words is amplifier. So these are one, two, three different types of amplifier we'll study. But you uh, you will see that it's like an evolution. So we start from the most basic one, which is the operational amplifier. And then we will go to the differential amplifier and we will see why we need to go from this to this. And then why we need to go from the differential amplifier to the instrumentation amplifier, which is the standard amplifier used in instrumentation. But we'll take it in, in sequence. So they are all connected together to come up with the instrumentation amplifier. So we'll start with operation amplifiers. And you see here the word has two components. The first component is operational. Uh, the second component is an amplifier. So what is operational and what is an amplifier? Operational that this device, the op amp, we call it for short, can do addition, can do subtraction, can do multiplication, can do division, can do integration, derivative, you name it. All mathematical operation, it can be done using the op-amp. As a matter of fact, when first the computer was invented, it was invented as what they call it, analog computers. And the main building block of the analog computers was the op-amp. And there, you have a lot of mathematical operation that require all of these and more, and everything can be done using the, the operation amplifier. So this is the word operational. The second word is an amplifier, means it amplify. And for us here, it amplifies the voltage. So why we need to, to have an amplifier from the first place? If you recall, when you talk about the strain gauge, when we added with the Wheatstone bridge, and when we show you to the thermocouples, okay, we, we, we have something in, in common on these sensors that the voltage is very small and few millivolt. It's very hard to measure this. So we need to amplify the voltage so that we have the voltages instead of millivolt, which tend to minus three of a volt into volt range. So that is why we need an amplifier to amplify those very, very tiny, small signals that we get them from our uh, from our sensors. OK, so let's start with the operational amplifier. What is it is what we call a three terminal electric device. OK, now we studied the resistor. We studied the voltage source. And we studied the current source, dependent and independent, and all these Devices are two terminal. We have one, we have two. However, the operation amplifier, we have uh, three terminals. Okay, one, two, and three. Forget about the rest, we'll come to them later on. But the most important terminals is V plus, V negative, and V out. These are the main three terminals. So we have two terminals for the input and one terminal of for the for the output now the relation between the output and the input is governed by this formula is that the v out is equal to g which is the gain of the amplifier and we'll talk about that how much amplification it can provide you times the difference between these two inputs now if you recall let me uh, give you an example. When you, if you recall from the uh, uh, Whitstone bridge, okay. So we have this. This is our uh, Whitstone bridge. So here the voltage coming from my from my sensor output voltage, whatever the, the, uh, or change in the resistance, whatever the, the value is. But what we are measuring here, I'm measuring the voltage here between these two points. Now, these two points, the ones that we connect them here. So we take one wire here, another wire there, and we will come in details about this later, later on. Now, the op-amp 
has actually not three terminals, it has eight terminals. For us, only three are very important, which is terminal two, three, and and six. This is how it looks like the uh, op amp uh, physically. It's a chip. It's a very tiny chip. Uh, again, unfortunately, uh, we usually have one experiment using the operational amplifier but, uh, and uh, the instrumentation amplifiers. But unfortunately, because the lab is not there, this is not easy to, to have it in your kit. You need some specific uh, equipment. So unfortunately, you will not be able to do an experiment with this. Nevertheless, OK, so we have one, two, three, four. And then if you count from the other size, five, six, seven, eight. So it has eight legs. However, only three, they are important for us. Number two, which is called the invert input or the input with a negative sign, or it will cause it, give it, it to, to make the output negative. So this is number two. And then non-inverting, which is number three. And the output, which is number six. Here it is. If you count from here, see this small, tiny, uh, which is this one. So when you do the counting, we count from this one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this two is this. This is number two. This is the what we call the inverting. This is number three, which is the non-inverting. And this is number six, which is your output. So these are the most important thing. We connect our input to these two and we measure the output from this. Now, there is another two important terminals which is number four and seven this one four and seven four and seven we connect to them the, what we call the bias so to uh, four we connect minus voltage dc of course as a bias and here we connect plus voltage dc as a bias now what is this bias this is an amplifier an amplifier means it gives you gain you enter a signal, let's say 10 millivolt, you are getting one volt. So 10, one volt, then you are getting a gain of 100. How you can get a gain? You have to give power. You cannot get gain from nothing. No one can get gain. In this world, in this physical world that we live in, you cannot get a gain from nothing. You have to pay for it. Okay, so what you pay here is this DC bias, and it's extremely important, this DC bias. Without it, the op amp will not work. If you try to connect an input without giving this DC power, powering your amplifier, giving it energy that can be utilized to do the amplification, it will not. It will not work. So this is this is extremely important. Now we don't show this. Sometimes we show it, and we'll see, tell you why. Sometimes in the questions, in the exam, and sometimes we just simply show it like this. Most of the time, you will see the op amp like this: three terminal device. One, two, and three. Sometimes we show it like this for one certain purpose. Either we show it like this or we provide you with the value of the DC bias. And I will come to this, why it's important. So we are left with three terminals. We have the offset null. Offset null. These are very advanced topic. We don't, we don't even teach them for first electron course for electrical. We teach them for advanced electron course or electrics course number two. And this is not connected. This is just for the symmetry to keep the chip has eight, eight legs. Now, in this course, we will deal only with ideal op amp. This one I told you with the offset null, this is to take care of some non-linearity, which we don't care about. So in this course, we will deal with an ideal operational amplifier. And when we say ideal operational amplifier, there are certain characteristics. First of all, it has an infinite gain, gain of the differential input. So we assume that the input is extremely high, very, very high. In practice, it is very high. The gain is tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. So it's extremely high. We assume it is an infinite gain. Second, an infinite input impedance so the input impedance here has an infinite value which will result that the current that enters here and we'll see this is equal to zero so there is no current in reality there is a current that goes in the device and this current usually in reality in microamp which is 10 to minus 6 amp so it's a very very small tiny current since we work with an ideal op amp 
we will ignore this current to make the analysis much easier. Then the output impedance is zero and it has an infinite bandwidth. What do we mean by a bandwidth? A bandwidth is now we say that the, this the amplifier give you some amplification at what frequency and we'll talk about the frequency uh, later on uh, but just to give you one simple idea what's a frequency a frequency is not for dc is for ac when we have something like this change with time we have something called frequency okay so this is the frequency it is this is the period the period is the time the signal start to repeat itself we call it t now your frequency is one over t now if you do this more often, meaning if you have the signal like this. So this is has higher frequency. What do you mean by higher frequency? The T is smaller, so the frequency is higher. OK, now when we say infinite bandwidth, when you go and buy the amplifier from the, the real amplifier, it will tell you what is the frequency you are interested in. OK, I'm interested in, let's say, 100 kilohertz. Then it will give you an amplifier that can work only from in this range of frequency 190 80 kilohertz but if you are interested in one gigahertz which is much much higher frequency this amplifier will not work you need to have another amplifier so what we assume here is said infinite bandwidth means you can deal with any frequency it doesn't really matter now in this course we will deal only with dc means the frequency is equal to zero. So even the frequency is not really an issue for us because we're only dealing with uh, DC uh, DC uh, uh, voltages. Now, this is one of the most important slide in this set of notes. And this is the key to solve any question in op -amp. There are two things that you need to know, extra information to solve any circuit with op -amp. The rest will be nodal, KCL only we will apply only kcl to solve the ob -amp questions but there are two important facts or two important uh, things that you need to know about the ob -amp. without this you cannot solve any of the ob -amp questions the first one and i mentioned that that the current that enters here i equal to zero i call it i in for inverting uh, or negative and the I for the positive terminal also equal to zero. So the currents that enter the op amp is equal to zero. The second thing, if we call this is V negative and this is V positive, these two voltages are equal. So Vn is equal to Vb. These two are the most important things. Once you understand this and you know KCL, then you can solve any question in the in the um, by the way of am is one of the questions we will have again in the final similar to the midterm you will have six questions five circuits and one multiple choice small calculations like what the in the midterm so this is the this is that will be the first topic we cover that will have one full question for the temperature it will be included in the multiple choice questions now Let's come here before we start uh, solving some question. Understand the importance of the bias and the importance uh, of what we call the closed loop gain and how we control the gain. Now, we said that the op amp is supplied by two bias voltages. I will call them V positive and V negative vs positive and vs negative or v bias positive and v bias bias negative this could be 5 volt 10 volt 15 volt okay now when you do this and you want to draw the characteristic of vn equal to v out and as a matter of fact your v out we said that equal to the gain times your vn which is vn is the subtraction of the two voltages v1 which is this one connected to the positive minus V2. So this is your gain. Your, this is your output voltage. So this is Vn or this is equal to the gain or this is called gain open loop. It doesn't matter what you call it. This is V1 minus V2 or the differential input, the difference between the two 
uh, the two inputs. Sometimes we, we set one of the inputs to equal to zero. So we are amplifying one, one either V1 or V2, as we will see. Now, we said that this G is extremely, extremely high value. So let's say it's like 100,000. Your voltages are very small. Let's say that your difference in the volt is one millivolt. So it's one times 10 to minus three. Okay, so we, we will get here 100 volt. Theoretically, this is what we should get. But will we get 100 volt? The answer is no. Why is that? Because of the saturation phenomena. When we draw Vn versus V out, you have Vn, you get a gain. You increase the inputs, you get a gain. Until you reach to the point that your V out reaches the VSS, then V out cannot exceed the VSS. So if this VSS is equal to, let's say, 10 volt, and this is minus 10 volt, so your output will not be 100. It will be this 10 or this 5 or this 15. That's it. So you will go into saturation. If you apply the amplifier as such, then you will go through to uh, saturation. And regardless what is your input is, you are always getting V out, which is equal to the Vs, which is a bad thing. So we want to control the amplifier. We don't want the amplifier to work what we call in open loop. Open loop means the following. This is your input and you, this is your output. There is no any connection between the output and the input. And as a matter of fact, you will see that we always we have what we call a feedback or a connection between the output and the input. And with this, we can control the gain. We will not let the gain controlled by G so that we will not go to the saturation, but we will, ourselves, we will have control in this value as we will, as we will see. And let's start. So this is the most common connection for the amplifier. We call this inverting amplifier. So the word inverting means that whatever input I am getting, I'm getting the opposite sign of this amplifier i'm getting some amplification now this circuit basically you will have here your vs so this is your vs is a voltage source and this is what you are measuring you are measuring the voltage between this point and this point as your v out and this is a common point so all of them we have the ground v equal to zero here this is for the nodal analysis and we want to find the objective always is to find the voltage gain. What do we mean by voltage gain? Voltage gain means this V out over Vs is equal to how much? How much gain I am getting? Because your this gain, G or A, whatever you call it, V out is equal to this Vs times this G. So whatever gain I have, I multiply it by Vs then I will get my V out. And my, remember, the whole objective here is, is what? I'm trying to amplify the signal. Okay, so I said that you have two important things. The two rules I told you and KCL. That's it. Nothing else will be needed in this, in this uh, type of question. So let's look here. I assigned certain current direction. We, we know that now in nodal analysis, you can assume any current direction. So here we have a current. I will call this current I1. We'll go slowly and then we'll go faster. I will call this is I2. And this is, I will call it I negative, IN. Okay. So current enter the nodes equal to current leaves the node. So apply KCL at VN. VN is this voltage. So we have I1 enter the node plus I2 enter the nodes, I n leaves the node. But what is I1 using nodal? I1 is nothing but V0 
minus Vn over R2. As a matter of fact, I don't need to write I1. I can write it directly as we know from nodal analysis. So this becomes V0. Always we will write the equations in terms of the node voltages. So we'll not use I1 and I2, but I just want to refresh your, your memory what we have done. So this is actually V0 minus Vn divided by R2 plus this is equal to the voltage at this node is Vs. Remember, all, everything is with this reference. Vs minus, again, Vn divided by R1 equal to In. So this is the KCL equation. Now let's start to simplify this equation. Now we will use our two rules. The first rule says that all the currents that enter the op amp equal to zero. So this current, as a matter of fact, is equal to zero. The current that enter this op amp, this is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. The second rule, we said that the Vn is equal to the Vp. The voltage at the negative input is equal to the voltage at the positive input. Okay, but what is Vp? Vp is connected to the ground, which is equal to zero. So your Vn also is equal to zero. So now my equations become equal to V0 minus zero over R2 plus Vs minus zero over R1 equal to zero. Okay. And then we will have Vs over R1 is equal to minus V out over R2 or from this your V out over Vs is equal to minus R2 over R1. And this is the most common fundamental circuit in operation amplifier, the inverting amplifier. And let's go back. It's an inverting because of this negative sign. So your V out will equal to minus R2 over R1 times Vs. So whatever the Vs, if the Vs is equal to five volt, then V0 will be equal to minus that. Minus the five times the gain. What is the gain? It's R2 over R1. Now, I am in control of the gain. I will control the gain so that I will not go into saturation. Because another thing I forgot to mention, if the op amp goes deeply into saturation, actually you are overheating it. And you could damage the op amp. So you don't want to go to saturation. That's not a good mood that you want to go there. Okay? So your output over input, which is the gain, equal to minus R2 over R1. So if I select R2, let's say equal to 100 kilo ohm, and I will select R1 is equal to 1 kilo ohm, then your V out over Vs equal to minus 100. So we have 100 gain. So if let's say I have a signal with 10 millivolt, my input, then my output equal to this 10 millivolt times minus 100, so it gives me a volt of minus one volt, which is a significant value that I can easily I easily measure. If I want to have a different gain, it's up to me. I can control it. Now, the internal gain of the op amp is doesn't, it's not there. It's not working anymore because work, we are working now in a feedback mode or a closed loop mode, not in the open loop. Open loop means this resistance doesn't exist. We have the input and the output, and there is no connection between the two. But you will see that always in the op amp, at least the one that we studied, always there is a feedback between the output and the input to control this again. Let's go for the second circuit, which is called the non inverting amplifier and i think you figure this out now by yourself when we say an uninverting so means that the output and the input will be with the same sign you are not changing the sign and it's an amplifier okay so here i am connecting the vs instead they are connected to vs to the inverting input here i'm connecting your vs with the plus minus volt to the non inverting input okay now I have this is as I2, I1, IN, and this IB. If I follow the signs, I will use KCL at VN. If we apply nodal directly, okay, this is kind of enter, this is kind of leaves. I, I, as we know, I can assign any direction I want. It doesn't really matter. So here we have uh, this node here is V0. 
because this is the output. So this is not is V0. This input is Vn. Okay. So KCL at Vn. This current is entering. So it is V0 minus Vn over R2. This current is leaving. So this is equal to Vn minus 0 divided by R1 plus plus I n. Okay, now back to the facts. We know I n is equal to 0, so this is goes to 0. Second, what is V n? V n is equal to V p. This is the second rule. First, the current, current enter the op amp R equal to 0. And the inverting input is equal to the non-inverting input, both. So your Vn equal to Vp equal to the Vs, my input. So I will come here and substitute. So we'll have here V0 minus Vs over R2 plus or equal to, sorry, equal to Vs over R1. So this is the equation. Out ends up. Now I will take this to the other side. So we have here V0 over R2 equal to Vs over R2 plus Vs over R1. I just move this to the other side. So here we have V0 over R2 equal to Vs 1 over R2 plus 1 over R1. I will multiply everything by R2. So we have here V0 equal to Vs 1 plus R2 over R1. So the gain, which is my gain, is V out over Vs. My output voltage divided by my input voltage. So this is V out over Vs is equal to 1 plus r2 over r1 now recall that from the previous one v out over vs equal to minus r2 over r1 now the gain is one just one plus r2 over r1 and if r2 over r1 is a large number so this one has, doesn't have really a big effect if this is let's say 100 so the r these two amplifiers will have similar gain However, this will give me a positive number. The other one will give me a negative, a negative number. Now, sometimes I need the negative number for some applications, and sometimes I need the positive number. So both are working. Now, we will have a very, very specific circuit here. Now, if you look here, what's the difference between this circuit and this circuit here? This is your VS connected and this is your ground v equal to zero so it is very similar but your r2 is equal to zero as a matter of fact so we know that v out over vs is equal to one plus r2 over r1 this is from the previous circuit now r2 here is equal to zero a short circuit now r2 equal to zero so it means that your v out over vs is equal to one or v out is equal to vs so your output voltage here is equal to vs now someone may ask a question why we need a circuit that its output is equal to its input what's the point we're not getting anything this is an extremely important circuit and we will see later on its application where once we deal with the uh, differential amplifier and the instrumentation amplifier so this is a very very important circuit uh, but we will understand later on how we can uh, use it so of course it doesn't help us in the amplification because it doesn't give any amplification but it does something else which is extremely important in instrumentation we will talk about that later on and we call this is a voltage follower and now we can figure out a voltage follower because the input or the out follows the output or the output follows the input so they are exactly the same thing we are not getting anything just we uh, 
uh, we are getting uh, the same one. And this, there is another name in the literature, in this circuit we call it a buffer circuit. And the word buffer gives some meaning its functionality that I will talk about that later on in this uh, uh, set of notes. Okay, now let's add one last circuit to analyze. And this circuit will have, uh, this is let's say V1 here, and this is your V2. Now I am having two inputs, V1 and V2. And I wanna see what is V out, and this is called adder inverter so you can figure out now adder means it adds so this is like addition and inverter it does the the inverter okay so here this is v1 and v2 so when i see the relation between v out and v1 and v2 so here this is one node as we know now and this is node is vn now this is vb is equal to zero vp equal to zero and your vn is equal to this so the voltage here at this point is zero volt now i don't need to to do that in details now we are assuming all currents are entering this current that enter here is equal to zero the current that goes in i n here the current is equal to zero so there's no current so we have basically we have this current this current and that current so we apply kcl at vn so I, already i assume i use these two rules this is equal to zero so i don't need to worry about this current and these two voltages are equal vb is equal to vn but vb is connected to the ground so your vn is equal to zero as well so everything is equal to zero now all the currents are entering you can assume all the currents are leaving it doesn't make any single difference you will get exactly the same result so Assuming this current that go here, which is I1 shown here, this is this V1 minus zero divided by R1 plus this current that enters V2 minus zero divided by R3. And this current that coming from here plus V out minus zero divided by R2 equal to zero so we will have uh, v out over r2 equal to minus v1 over r1 minus v2 divided by r3 and from this you can say that v0 is equal to minus r2 over r1 v1 minus r2 we divide here by r2 sorry multiply multiply by r2 multiply by r2 so r2 divided by r3 times v2 okay now what if we select r1 equal to r2 equal to r3 so all of them are equal resistors so if they are equal, they will cancel. So this means that your V out is equal to minus V1 minus V2. So if we take minus as a common factor, so this becomes V1 plus V2. So it's an adder. I added V1 and V2 inverter. I multiplied by a negative, a negative sign. Okay. So these are some fundamental circuit, and this is how we will analyze uh, the circuits of the of the op amp. Now we are ready to start solving some examples with some numbers, and let's see how we can we can do this. Okay, we'll have just one example today, and then we will continue on Thursday the the rest. Here the, determine a closed loop. Now we understand the word closed loop again closed loop meaning that the this circuit this amplifier circuit has feedback here called closed loop voltage gain so the gain is i want to find v out over my vn so this is my my objective what is v out over vn now here we have a little bit different than previous circuits which is we have an extra node here 
okay we don't have vn directly applied but there is an extra node here so we need to apply kcl at these two nodes now one important fact here for the op amp unless i ask you what is this current if i don't ask you what is this current never apply kcl at the output node never always you apply the nodes at or the case at the other nodes but not the output node why for one important reason because this current is unknown to us so if i add a kcl here i then i have to add this unknown so i am adding one equation with one unknown so i'm not really gaining anything other complicating my life always the kcl with the other nodes are sufficient to find all my variables so here we have this node and this node now all the resistors are given to you as symbolic not as numbers but doesn't really matter so it is 3r r 2r it doesn't really matter now this is grounded so the v here is equal to zero so this is very important to start with which is defining your nodes the two nodes of the op amp what is the voltage at each node before doing anything so if this is equal to zero so it means that this node is equal to zero as well because this node and this node will have the same voltage and the current that goes here and here is equal to zero the i is equal to zero now that's this is what you need to do so we apply kcl at node a okay let's assume the currents are living here i don't specify any current direction or even if it's specified, it doesn't really matter assume currents are leaving so i will call this is v a so here it is uh, v a minus v n divided by 3 r this current to the left plus v a divided by r plus v a minus zero divided by 2 r this is equal to equal to zero okay so let's get off rid of the 3r to 2r let's multiply everything by 6r let's say so we'll have here 2 va minus vn plus 6 va plus 3 va equal to 0 2 va 6 va and 3 va so this is equal to 11 va equal to 2 vn so from this, you can see that your Vn is equal to 5.5 Va. So this is the relation between Vn and Va. But remember, I don't want to the relation between Vn and Va. I want it between Vn and V out. So we need to do KCL at B. So KCL at node B. Again, assume the currents are leaving. So we have here two currents, this current and this current. This current is equal to zero. So we have here VB minus. Now VB is equal to zero. So I don't need to, to mention this. VB is equal to zero. So this is zero minus VA divided by 2R plus zero minus V out divided by 22r equal to zero so what i will do i will multiply everything here by 22r so here we'll have minus 11 va okay equal to v out but from this your VA is equal to VN over 5.5. So from this, minus 11 times VA, which is VN divided by 5.5, equal to V out or V out over VN equal to minus minus two so the gain in this circuit is equal to minus minus two so here we needed to do two kcls in all the previous example we need to do only one kcl okay so uh, this is enough for today's lecture so what we'll do on thursday we'll be solving more more examples 
and then we'll start to explore the other operation amplifiers, why we need them, and what are their uh, importance. Any question here, please? I know your mind now is a bit set with uh, with the mid with the other exam and quiz. Wish you all the best. And we will be working on the midterm uh, marking this week. So uh, hopefully by uh, next week, hopefully by early next week, we will be able to tell you the grades as much as we can. We'll do our best to give you the grades early next week. Okay, guys, thank you very much and uh, good luck. Uh, there's some.